Division of fractions is kind of the same thing with divisions of whole numbers. We're asking how many times the divisor, the thing after the, the division sign, are in the dividend, which is the first, the first thing. In this case, the things are fractions. Say we have these five boxes. And then we're asking the question, how many half boxes go into these five boxes. So what we're really doing here is we're dividing. We're asking how many half boxes can go into these five unit boxes. So what you can do is you can cut all of these boxes into half and count them up because each one of these halves uh, counts as one for this thing. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So the answer here is 10. What we've done is we said 5 divided by 1 half equals 10. Now this visual is nice for problems that are simple, but when we get to more complex problems, for instance, let's say we had 23 over 12 divided by 5 over 6, um, we can't really use a visual to break these things down. Now to do this problem, there's a very simple algorithm to handling division of fractions. Um, the important thing here is to note that order matters, all right? This is the first thing, this is the second thing, and the division is in between, right? Make sure you're writing the problem down exactly as it's given to you. The way we divide fractions is we instead multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to take the, the division sign and I'm going to multiply. And then I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to flip it to get the reciprocal. That's what reciprocal means. It just means flipped. So this is what we do instead. Now this is just a multiplication problem. And so we can solve this as we normally would. We can cross cancel. 6 and going to 6 once, 6 and going to 12 twice. And we get 23 times 1 on top, 2 times 5 on bottom is 10. And there we have our answer. Now, make sure when you do this, you always flip the second thing. This is the one that you flip, OK? If you write this problem incorrectly, if you like flip them around, um, doing that kind of stuff, you're gonna get the problem wrong. That's because um, division uh, and subtraction actually has this as well, does not have uh, what's called the commutative property. Addition and multiplication does, right? We can, I can say two plus three is the same thing as three plus two. And of course, uh, two times three is the same thing as three times two. But that is not true for subtraction and multiplication, right? 2 minus 1 um, does not equal 1 minus 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The same thing is true for um, 4 divided by 2 does not equal 2 divided by 4. They're very different. So uh, don't flip these numbers around when, when, you, when you do them. Make sure you write the problem exactly as stated, and then always take the second thing here this thing and flip the second number. Let's just do a couple of these um, to make sure we solidify our understanding of this technique. Five halves divided by four thirds is the same thing as five half, uh, sorry, five twelfths times the reciprocal of the second fraction, which is three fourths. Remember, we're, we're always flipping the second fraction. Now I can cross cancel quite easily, divide both by three. And on top we have five times one is five. On bottom we have four times four is 16. Okay, six divided by one and one half. I need to first change these into um, fractions and then improper fractions. So six is the same thing as six over one. And then one half, right, we do one time, uh, sorry, two times one is two. 
and 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 halves. Now we can multiply by the reciprocal, multiply by the reciprocal, and we can cross cancel. We can go to both of these. That gives us 2 times 2 on top, which is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. And 4 divided by 1 is 4. All right, 7 30 seconds, 7 over 32 divided by 1 and 3 fourths. The first one's fine, so we're going to write that out, but the second one we need to make into an improper fraction, giving us, um, we're still dividing here, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7 over 4. Now we can multiply by the reciprocal, multiply by the reciprocal, and we got a lot of cross canceling we can do here. 7 divided by 7 is 1, 4 by 4 is 1, and 4 and going to 32 8 times. Now we have 1 times 1 is 1, and 8 times 1 is 8. So we get 1 8. If we allow for 2 and 5 eighths of an inch for the thickness of a course of a brick or a row of bricks, that, that includes the mortar joints, how many courses of brick will there be in a wall that's 47 and 1 fourth inch high? We're trying to figure out how many 2 and 5 eighths inches like sets can go into 47 and 1 fourth inch. Hopefully, this is clear, that we have to do 47 and 1 fourth divided by 2 and 5 eighths. Now you might be able to find a way to divide mixed numbers. Um, it's probably going to be quite tedious and annoying to work with, so the first thing I always recommend doing is changing mixed numbers to improper fractions. We'll change it back in the end, that's fine, but it's going to be easier to work with improper fractions than mixed numbers. So. Let's do that. 4 times 47, and then plus 1. 4 times 47 is 188, plus 1 is 189. This is still over 4, of course. And then we divide by 8 times 2 is 16, plus 5 is 21. And now we can multiply by the reciprocal and cross cancel as always. Four and going to four once, four and going to eight twice. Now, uh, 189 can be divided by three. Pretty sure, yep. 21 divided by three is seven. And 189 divided by three is 63. Oh, we can actually reduce more. 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 63 divided by 7 is 9. Oh, okay. Of course, 9. Is that a brain fart there? Okay, now we have 9 times 2 on top over 1 times 1 on bottom. 9 times 2 is 18. 1 times 1 is 1. And now you see that we don't have to change it back to mixed numbers because it's a whole number right off the bat. So uh, this division, right, uh, if you need to change it back to a mixed number in the end, do so. But improper fractions work the same way proper fractions do. So I always recommend working with improper fractions rather than mixed numbers. They tend to be a lot easier to work with, and it's not terribly hard to convert between mixed and improper. So we have 18, 18 courses of brick uh, would be in these, this 47 and 1 fourth inch high wall. Here we have a floor plan problem. So the, the smaller um, drawing is 3 and a half inches by 4 and 5 eighths an inch. And this has a scale of one fourth inch represents one foot. So we're looking for the actual size of the room. And sometimes if these problems don't necessarily make sense, it can be helpful to draw a picture. So I'm going to do that. 
I'm going to say we have, this isn't going to be accurate, of course, but um, it's the idea that's going to help us. Four and five eighths of an inch here, and three and one half inch here. And of course, this has a one fourth inch goes to one foot. That's the scale. So we're just trying to like expand this out, out to see what, what is the actual size of the room. What's the length and what's the width? So if well, let's just look at the width to start. Three and a half inches is the width and the drawing. If one fourth of an inch goes to one foot, then how many one fourth inches goes into three and a half inches? Because that number will be the same thing as how many feet there are. All right, so what we're doing is we're saying three and one half inch divided by one fourth. And um, we're going to change three and one half to a mixed number. Sorry, improper fraction is a mixed number. Three times two is uh, six, and six plus one is seven. And then we're dividing this by one fourth. So, of course, we multiply by the reciprocal. We can cross cancel here by two. And now we get seven times two is 14 over one times one is one, which of course is 14. So there's 14 one fourth inch uh, measurements inside of three and one half inch, meaning that this uh, width here, because you know, one, each of the one fourth goes to goes to one foot, which and there's 14 of them, which means there's 14 one foot measurements, or in other words, it's 14 feet here. Okay, we can do the same process to find the length of the room. How many one fourth inch measurements go into four and five eighths inch? So let's change to an improper fraction. Eight times four is 32 plus five is 37. And now we can multiply by the reciprocal and we can cross cancel. Before we go into both of those, and now we have 37 times 1 is 37, 2 times 1 is 2. And now let's make this into a mixed number. So, how many times can 2 go into 37? Um, 2 can go in there 16 times. 2 times 16, I'm sorry, not, not 16, um, 2 times 18 is 36. Yep. And 30, 37 minus 36 is 1. So there's one left over. Okay, so uh, 1 fourth, the, the, the 1 fourth inch measurement can go into 4 and 5 eighths, 18 and a half times, and for each of those 18 and a half times, that's the same thing as a one foot on the actual scale, which means the length of the room is 18 and a half feet. Now, if this one foot was a different number here, like say, well, let's say this is this is one half foot, then we'd have to then the the measurement wouldn't be 14 here, right? It, it would be. Um, just 14 times one half, which is um, seven. So it'd be seven feet there. So we have to have an extra step, but because um, each one of these, you know, one fourth inch measurements goes directly to one, that's the reason why this is gonna be the same number there. So an agricultural supply yard um, sells like kind of padding material by the scoops. And one scoop is 23, uh, sorry, two thirds of a cubic yard. So we're working with four cubic yards and seven cubic yards. How much um, do we need? How, how many scoops do we need for those? So let's look at the first one. How many two thirds of a cubic yard, which is the same thing as one scoop, goes into four cubic yards? 
because if we can find that number, then that's the same thing as the number of scoops. Just like in the previous problem, um, it was the same thing as the feet um, measurement for the room. So four divided by two thirds. Of course, we can write this as four over one because we want fractions. And now we can multiply by the reciprocal and cross cancel. Two times three is six. One times one is one. And we get six. And this is going to be six scoops are needed for four cubic yards. So for seven cubic yards, it's the same, same process. Seven divided by two thirds equals seven over one divided by two thirds. So we have seven over one times three halves. There's no cross canceling we can do here. So let's uh, do the multiplication. Seven times three is 21. One times two is two. And now we're going to write this as a mixed number because you don't think of 21 over two scoops. Uh, two can go into 21 10 times. Two times 10 is 20. 21 minus 20 is 1. And of course, we're still at a, a fraction of 2 there. So we have 10 and 1 half scoops are needed for that one. This is for four, um, 4 cubic yards. And this one is for seven cubic yards.